You're live, Chris. Say hey. Hey, how y'all doing? Chris Roush. I'm out here on the food boat with Derek. Um, this episode is gonna be called the uh, the King of Pork. Let me uh, let me go ahead and get this camera to move real quick so you can see the uh, last the tail end of the container ship going by. Not sure if you can see that in the distance back there, but um, we're uh, we're out here on the hob call again. We're uh, we're away from the dock, and I'm gonna hang out here and cook a pork rack, huh? Yes, sir. We're gonna get her all cleaned up, and we'll we'll truss it up and uh, get her in the smoker and. Go nice, nice. So let me go ahead and switch over to this camera, <laughs> and uh, and let Chris do his uh do his thing. All right. So here we have a beautiful pork loin that that Derek has provided for us. Uh, we got our got our rib cage here in the back. Got our front side loin over here. Um, first thing we're going to start, there's a little membrane that comes with majority of actually all of your loins right here. You kind of peel it back and you can just take your fingers and you rip that off. It's hard to do with gloves on. Alright, just like that. Alright. Now the pork loin here has a little thing called these little button bones, which kind of sits right underneath the rib cage. You can zoom in right here. You can kind of see you want to take a paring knife and kind of just dig around the bottom of it to take it out. If you don't take these out, um It'll be a big surprise to whoever bites into it, and they're probably going to lose a tooth or two, <laughs> lose a filling at least. And so we're going to do that first and just go ahead and get these out. So while he does that real quick, we have a half-inch slice pork chop that we sell a bunch throughout North Carolina, and we will do a dish with it here. It's in a sandwich, and it, Chris, it is a sirloin in, it's a sirloin in bone-in pork chop. And it gets breaded, fried, and put between two slices of white bread with the bone in it. <laughs> Jesus. It sounds insane. <laughs> and they sell a epic amount of those. And it's unbelievable that the bone is still in it. So when you said that, it just reminded me of that, that cut. Because it's like, oh, look, we got a, a surprise in this thing for us. <laughs> yeah, I would take two of those sandwiches, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, for the sides today, we're just going to do some, we're just going to stuff the loin and when okay. it comes out with the crown, um, I don't think it needs much more than that. We're kind of just focusing big on the pork today. Oh, this is a big pork dish. I mean, you have an 11 rib rack there. That's a lot of meat. I mean, this, this, this dish right here is great for anything. I mean, it doesn't necessarily just have to be holidays, but any special occasion that you have, you know, it definitely can feed up to six to eight people. And um, it's just a fun dish to have. You put it in the middle, and everybody kind of gets to eat off of it, and uh, it's delicious. Now, what kind of wood did we wind up using today? Uh, so I've got a combination of hickory and applewood in there right now. Okay. That's what that smell is. It's starting to smell really good out here. Yeah, it is. Uh, the smoker's rolling some smoke off there. So right. and we got Mariner. Mariner chilling right here. Good old boy, huh? What do you say? All right, so he's ready to eat. Yeah. All right, so now all the button bones are gone. You can kind of see underneath the rib right here where all the holes are. Yeah. That's taking all of them out right there. Now we're going to get into looking at the front. Normally, if there's any excess fat over here, we would take it off. Got this little excess skin. We'll, we'll peel off to clean it up a little bit. But as far as fat's concerned, this this seems to be a pretty pretty good cut where I'm not gonna have to take much off at all. Now, Chris, to fill some of this time, now I know you got that whole bunch of time when you're Frenching this out, but what's some of your culinary background here in town? Where yeah. are you at now? How'd you get there? Here in town now, I'm at the Francis Marion Hotel downtown. 
Uh, I moved down here in 2008 to go to the Art Institute of Charleston. I graduated in 2011 with a culinary, a bachelor degree in culinary management. Um, I've been all the way around from uh, catering to fine dining to short order cook. Um, I started off at a Waffle House back when I was in high school. Got oh, told, the American Hibachi, huh? Hey, you know, Waffle House is America's place to eat. This is Chris. <laughs> how may I help you? You know, still like to answer the phone like that a couple times. And uh, no, I, I moved. I, I came down here because I got told I had to go to college, and, and cooking was my only thing that I really knew how to do, and it was my passion. So, um, yeah, been with the Francis Mary now since July. Um, it's a great place to work. And uh, now, before that, you were with Hamby's, and then before that. See, I was with Hammy Catering on and off for seven years. I was executive chef there for three years. Um, I worked with Miss Hamby originally when I was in culinary school. That was a that was a great experience. Uh, unfortunately, there's no more Hamby's left at Hamby Catering, but that's still a very good very good company. Um, and before that, um, I was where was I before that? You were at Triangle. What? No, no, Aldi Law. Oh, Ali Law, Ali for Law. yeah, yeah, and then and then right before Ali Law was yeah. that triangle, and that's how that's how we met. That's how we met. Yeah, and that's where uh, that's where old Mariner gets his uh, Mariner special, the uh, the bacon and eggs. He's uh, he's kind of wore out after being out in the sun all day. We had to get out here early. Chris wanted me to put the uh, the other rack in at 9 a.m. <laughs> So I've been chilling at the dock all day, and Mariner has been chilling with me. Yeah, I was, I was at work, so don't worry. Yeah. I, I was yeah. cooking brunch and breakfast. So now here, we're going to French these bones, okay? And okay. I, I wound up after I did the last one, I, I kind of did a little research, and I have an easier way to get this done. So we're going to scrape along the bone first. Yeah. And then kind of clean both sides of the bone. And we're going to do that all the way down the loin. And then once that happens, we're going to separate it off. But I'm going to get started on this right now. Just so we can get these started. And uh, yeah, this this might take me a minute, but it'll be really nice and clean when I get done with it. See, the that skin kind of just comes right off if you use the back of your knife. Okay. And you just want to do that on both sides. And then we'll wind up pulling them, pulling the meat apart right there afterwards, and it's gonna come out cleaner. Yeah, the other night when uh, when we cleaned the first one, uh, it had been a minute, and so it took me a little longer to French than I thought it would. Sometimes you got to go back into the old research books, and yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, before before Triangle, I was at a place called Cheska. That was actually the first restaurant that I opened. Unfortunately, we didn't last past a year because our owner was a fraud and stole the concept from the Cheska, New York, and we had no idea. Oh, geez. Um, yeah, Tony. He was not the best of guys. Anyway, and then uh, before that, it was social, high cotton. Um, oh, so some Forge. big names. Yeah, um, I've been around a little bit, you know. I, of course, of course, there's an easier way to do that. <laughs> oh we have our our resident chef in the uh in the chat right now yeah. he's gonna tell you an easier way to do it probably here in a second but let me I guess find the remote for this because it's showing up on the screen that it's showing more but it's showing up to y'all as less so let's zoom you out a little bit there. Get you. Oh, hush, Mayor. Mayor wants to be vocal to everyone. Yep. <laughs> when dogs bark at each other like that, it reminds me of, hey, what's your name? <laughs> kind of like in the 101 Dalmatians I, 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 when they're all going at each yeah. other at the, at the beginning. The all dog alert. Yep. The all dog, yeah. Power tools. <laughs> Is it an easier way to do it, power tools? Well, that's what, that's what Brandon's saying, power tools. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can take a look at thought of this thing and, and cut right through everything. Power tools, huh? He's he's always the one to sit there and tell me tell me there's a much easier way. And then Civi is telling us, go right ahead in the comments, because 
again, this isn't gonna be the first nor the last time we do something like this out here. I had a lot of time even just coming out early and sitting there manning the, uh, the smoker. So if there's an easier way to do it, by all means, drop in the comment section below. Chris is a big boy. Hey, I don't know everything. He's not gonna get his feelings hurt. So. I love to learn. You gotta learn every day, you know. Yeah. So this is just the easiest, easiest way that I currently know how to do it. Yeah, there's um, there's a show on the History Channel, like I told you, that uh, they make it look really easy. French and out of rack. Score both sides and then do your incisions on both sides of the bone with your boning knife and it cleans up in a minute. Then simply pull with a towel, alternately like dental floss. Oh, geez. Yeah, we're about, we're about to get to that point right here. <laughs> as soon as I get this first one out, bones are already clean. And this should just pop right out. I got that one. Yep. That meat looks really good. I'm getting hungry. Yeah, the smell of that smoker, that's what that's what's gotten me so far. Well what got Mariner was the uh the other rack coming out of the smoker. He woke up from a dead slumber. Come check that out. Mm. By the way, we're we're a little bit into this right now. If y'all could tell me how's audio sounding, how's everything looking on your end, give me a thumbs up. Let me know um, how everything's looking. Like I said, we're still out here playing around with this, getting this set up all set up for y'all to bring you some good quality uh, live streams in the near future. I got a thumbs up from Tim, perfect. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, you can... we've, we've got a couple other dates that we've talked about that we were gonna do together. Yeah, Chris is gonna be back out here again at the end of April when they're doing the blessing of the fleet in Mount Pleasant. Uh, it'll be just around from here. And let me pan out and show you, we got a boat going by, so. We're out here on the Hobcaw. Hobcaw Yacht Club is just down the creek where they're heading. Um, where we filmed the last two days is uh, is up the creek a little bit further. We got Mariner coming over here. Oh, what do you say, bud? What do you say? Hey, Mar. And we got drug money going by there. <laughs> I would venture to say he's in the prescription business. <laughs> well, that one's starting to move a little bit on that one. Ah, Cuban Rum is in the uh, chat. Audio good. No complaints. Good to see you, Cuban Rum. We got a little email traffic going back and forth. Some ideas for some recipes. I really appreciate that. We'll have them coming up in the future, too. Like I said, we're going to get Chris back out here during the... Uh, Blessing of the fleet, and we're going to do shrimp three ways that day, right? Correct, sir. What uh, what way is we looking at doing it? Can you give them a little teaser? Uh, we're gonna we're gonna do one old school low country pickled recipe. Okay. I want to say we did a shrimp perlu, and can't quite remember the last one we discussed. I'd have to go look back and look at my notes. Gotcha. We'll leave that one a surprise. <laughs> All right. Where are these are coming out now? Again, this is all Cooper River Farm pork. And just down the way there where you saw the uh, container ship going by where all these boats heading, that is the Cooper River here in Charleston. And all of this stuff we pull from family-owned farms out of Southern Virginia. 
North Carolina, South Carolina, process it at our facility up in North Carolina. Um, you'll notice these racks, we do pull a little bit of a smaller pig when we do stuff. Uh, we find that portion control is a little bit better and it, it allows for a plated uh, meal that's not going to drive food cost up that much. And that is trying to fight these bones. They are a little bit smaller than their normal. Oh, now he's coming up with another excuse <laughs> on me. Now he's coming up with another excuse on me. The last one was frozen. The last one was frozen. <laughs> it was frozen. You are not wrong, my friend. I'm sorry, we're almost, I'm almost there right now. I should have found that little. There it is. Is this a busy weekend at the Francis Marion Hotel? Yes, it is with, uh, with the food and wine, everything going on. We're all up getting ready for wedding season. Uh, a lot of companies are setting uh, their their floor plan their floor plan out for the for the year. They're renting out a lot of our rooms and our spaces. So breakfast and and dinner, especially the company dinner, has been really big right now at the moment. And uh, yeah, it's been it's been pretty balls to the wall at the moment. Yeah, I'm I'm sorry the the sun. We got people complaining about the sun in the background. And I can imagine it is, it is not good. Let me zoom in real quick and see if you can get that ship going by. Um, I might have to hop back at the helm and reposition, reposition the barge while uh, while Chris does some cooking. So, yep, I am almost there. Three bones away from being able to to make the next move. And we'll continue on with our process of All right, making well, the crown. While you're doing that, I'm going to put the camera down here on you. And I am going to go hop on the helm and reposition the boat for these fine folks. All right, sounds good. Because I am sure that that is causing issues. I really, really wanted to get them to be able to see the ships in the background. Well, it is a beautiful day out here. But unfortunately, like you said, the uh, the sun, we're competing with it right now. So let's uh, let's go ahead and be right back. I got to um, engage a spud. engage a spud for you and bring it up so while i'm here yeah i wish y'all could really be here i mean it's a beautiful day i wish you could see those cables crying make me nervous after uh after that issue that we had the other day at the uh, wildlife expo but um i think we're good I've got plenty of extra cable on the boat. I went and picked that up the other day. Sorry, the uh, the spud was really in the mud. Um, let me figure out where the best place to situate this is we we turn it look that way or yeah i might might pull up both spuds and go on that side of the creek bear with me again a little bit longer bear with me a little bit longer we're gonna pull both spuds up and uh go on the other side of the creek all together So on that port side, the one that broke on me two weeks ago, ended up having to buy a, uh, a new motor for it. 
the um, all the issues we were having ended up rounding out the uh, the teeth on the winch and um, left us in quite a situation. I'm gonna go ahead and get this fuzz up on it. and get us situated. Everything's going good today. Give me one second, fellas. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and then we'll be back to the show. So these spuds, by the way, I know I've explained them to you. Brandon and Mike have had a chance to actually see them in action in person. They work like power poles on a fishing boat and uh, hold us in place. So I might actually try to just cut completely across the, uh, the creek here and uh, give you a little bit different view because it looks like we've We've already had two container ships go across the uh, the bow. Maybe maybe we can get you some nice views of those. So. so, Chris, are you still in screen? There, he is still in screen. So he's still. Am I still in screen? That one there. Oh, hey, what's that up? camera, that camera there is watching your knife work going on. So as you can see, Chris is still, uh, still over there, French in the, uh, the roast. So we're not wasting much time. Howdy. Uh, what's no. that? Yeah, no food today. We got some people that do know the boat and know that I do serve food off of this or have in the past, um, when it was on the pontoons we we're actually licensed to sell at the moment we're not let me get those spuds up and uh like i said we'll motor on down to the other side of the creek let me show you his knife work a little bit again. I'm just cleaning these up a bit. I'm about ready to move on to the next. You're about ready to move on, you said? Yes, sir. Oh, just man. Whenever you're ready. <laughs> I'm just enjoying being out on the Might water. be time. So next weekend, just so y'all know, I'm back here at the Stern right now. Next weekend, I'm planning on doing a maintenance weekend. Friday, we're gonna have our friend Casey out. And we're gonna be doing some stuff with some shark teeth. But uh, Saturday, we're gonna um, just be doing some maintenance on the boat. I think it's time for an oil change on this thing and a few other pieces of uh, equipment that needs some attention so hey, hey. while it. while we um reset and then we'll have my buddy brian come out from uh from daddy's nope. um, food out. truck cooking some breakfast style food on sunday uh but i'll probably end up being on the boat all day friday saturday sunday just doing maintenance stuff at the dock um, so we'll, we'll, we'll do some live streaming during that, but in the meantime, we're just going to go ahead and, uh, get back to it. Let me show you. He's probably going to get mad at me with all of that. He's probably going to get mad at me showing off his knife work that close and personal.
So Brandon, the Geechee captain, knows the uh, one of the next projects I've ordered some stuff is a canopy because ho I'm hoping that that canopy will uh, will help alleviate some of the lighting issues that we're having right now. Um, if we uh, if we can control the the sun a little bit better. And that is one of the problems of being outside is uh, is we have to figure out ways to mitigate the uh, the environment as much as possible. And that's what I'm having an issue with right now. So probably going to put another canopy up over top of the entire presentation area out there sooner than later. Um, Today is making that very clear that that's what we need to do. So looking at travel. Travel packages, -hoo -wee. 29 degrees. Yeah. Um, Who's got 29 degrees? What's that? Who's got 29 degrees? Uh, our fine folks out on the West Coast. Oh. Let me go ahead and disengage the winches, put them on free spool again. Um, one thing I do want to get you here soon is get you some stern facing uh, cameras because I, I think there's a lot of action that seems to be going down on that, that part of the boat. So I do need to get you back there so you can see it. But right now, I think we're good. Mm -hmm. We're getting there. I got to get awkwardly close so I can then go ahead, unplug <laughs> this camera and, uh, and have it there. And then I'm going to come back over here. So I have a little device. How's the sun now there? Is it better for y'all? It looks like you're not competing much with it and it's not blowing it out too much. Hopefully that's a, a better view for y'all. Like I said, in the back there, you've got the Wando terminal. That is part of the port of Charleston. So you can see the, uh, the terminal there and it spans all the way over the tree line over there. So this right. is this is what we're working with, huh, Chris? Yes, sir. I'm ready to go on to the next. I was doing a little extra cleaning. Bones came out nice and nice and well over here. The rest of that little minuscule stuff that'll come off when we're cooking. Okay. But that's pretty much. Ah, this one get a little bit. All right, let my OCD kick in there for a second. No, man, that's that's why you uh, earn titles of executive chef. The, the details, right? Yeah, you you want to clean these bones. If you were to roast it off, they, they would they would stay lighter. Um, you can see with the one that we finished, we got a really nice brown color on our other bones when we pull that out. But now we're to the point where we pretty much have teeth out here. Nice. All right. Nice. So we're gonna get a stuffing set up first, right? Yeah. Well, we need to cut off. We need to cut off this chain first. Okay. All right. There's like this little trim of meat right here in between. Yeah. In between the bone. So we're gonna take that. Oh, and, there's that uh, sun again. Sorry, fellas. <laughs> Sorry, folks. And so we just kind of want to follow that down the bone line. All right. And fold it back. And now this would be great for any sausages, any ground up pork. I mean, anything that you want to put it in. Yeah, we can put it in a bowl and drop it in the chef base over there. It's running at, I think I left it at 37 degrees, so it should be good. Yeah, it'll be a, it'll be a good loin to grind up or eat. Some taco meat or something. Absolutely. All right. Just like that. So awesome. we're going to save that over here. Now that we're nice and clean, you can see where we have our, have our bones that's going to hold up. And pretty much after we trust it, da -da -da -da, we'll, we'll have, have ourselves looking a like crown. A crown. Awesome. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make little incisions up here right next to the bone. I'm gonna go on the left hand side just because that's that's what I'm feeling today. And this is just gonna help us be able to wrap it. It's gonna make it like an accordion. 
and we're going to do it on the top and then we're going to go down here on the bottom and try to angle up on the opposite side of where the cut was made so we're going to go on the right hand side of the bone and do the same thing okay these ones you seem to be making a little deeper yeah so on the bottom if you can get the bottom wrapped around tighter, then you can just you can get your crown a little better. Okay. I just learned that from the last one. <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't honestly. It's been it's been a minute since I crowned one of these. Well, those before. who the, oh man, that looks beautiful. Those who watched Friday learned uh, that we had a saying in the construction world that we did it right because we did it twice, and. Uh, Seems to be the same in the culinary world too. I mean, that's that looks that's that looks sexy. as beautiful as we're gonna get. That is a nice presentation. So, so yeah, put that in a bowl. We'll throw it in the in the chef base, right. and then let's get some stuffing going. I guess, huh? Yeah, let me try. I'm gonna truss this up first. Wait, I want to change my gloves real fast. But well, you don't want to put stuffing all the way to the bottom. <laughs> you are right. Not right off often, but I'm right sometimes. All right, Mayor. Yeah, Mayor's been over here trying to snack a little bit of pork. Yeah, he's Nobody. dying for it. He's dying for it. All right, he's giving me the he's giving me the eyes right now. Like, come on, man. We got some other guys coming in hot here too. Of course they are. The good thing about this boat, though, is you see a little bit of movement. But as you can see, I'm right on the edge and I'm not all that weary when these boats go by like that. Um, just because this, this barge is a nice steel deck barge, has a lot of weight to it. All right, so for this stuffing, we're gonna, we're gonna keep it simple. We're gonna keep it basic. Okay. We're not gonna try to go crazy with anything. We're gonna go typical box stouffer stuffing there's nothing wrong with stouffer stuffing i don't care what anybody says i'm gonna do onion celery got a little garlic powder um salt pepper crushed red crushed red pepper flake and then we're gonna uh, zest a little bit of orange fresh parsley and thyme i think nope rosemary uh you got thyme down there too you got thyme i gave you sage i gave you rosemary yeah sage sage uncooked is gross if anybody's ever tried it it, uh, try, try, try a piece of raw sage and tell me I'm wrong. I made that mistake when I was. Uh, it'll be a few hours in the uh, smoker, though. <laughs> try a piece of raw sage. <laughs> Fair enough. You want you want to try it on camera? Huh? You try it on camera? Maybe here in a second. Let, let's uh, let's okay. go ahead and get this stuff rocking and rolling, and then uh. I'll make a fool of myself. Is it like the one chip challenge or something like that? <laughs> no, I just not that bad. My chef made me eat it one time a long time ago. I I tried to garnish with with uncooked sage, and he made me regret it instantly. So you, li you live and you learn, you know. Yeah. Those are the little things you remember. That's like the one time I wrapped up mussels on the line and. Uh, I came in the next day and the, my chef had wrapped saran wrap around my face and asked me how I liked it. <laughs> Little did I know that I, I killed that whole pan of mussels because they couldn't breathe. So, and neither could I when I had the saran wrap around my face. But I'll tell you what, I never wrapped mussels again in my life. <laughs> but those are the things you can't do anymore because now our society, the chefs we have nowadays aren't, aren't, aren't the same, you know, and they see everything on TV. They think it's cute, and you gotta get the ones who want to drive in in the kitchen and learn from that. All right. I am so sorry for not paying attention to the all in the chat right now. I will hear shortly. Um, like I said, there's a lot of action going on up here at the cutting station, so I was gonna get this. Uh, action film for you and then uh, then I'll hop into the chat. Can I catch these birds for you? We got some uh, some seagulls. We'll this is not gonna work. This, you, you'll get some of it in there. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> well, 
I hope the fish like parsley. <laughs> You're good. Sorry for that rough chop there, but uh, that's about the best we can do at the time. Get it time. Get it Get time. It. Yeah. Yeah. That was funny. Mariner's, uh, Mariner's getting mad that the seagulls are coming around. He's like, I've already claimed this lot. <laughs> I, I need you to back off. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all need to go back to where you came from. This is my food. All right. That should be about it. Over here we have a little bit of chicken stock that we're going to take. I normally just do enough for Phil. You just want to soften everything up. And like Derek had said, we don't have to worry about cooking the onions and the celery because the smoker's going to do it, going to do it for it. All right, we're going to add just a little bit more, let that sit and kind of get soft. And then while we do that, we're going to go ahead and rub down, go back to our loin of pork, and we're going to rub her down. All right, so like I said before, here's a little bit of garlic powder, a little bit of onion, some paprika. I'm trying to cover it. Sorry, I'm trying to cover it up so it doesn't go, yeah, all, the wind. We're go all over with the wind. me. Yeah. All right, a little crush of pepper. You want to rub that nicely on the inside. On the outside, otherwise, I'm just going to go with a straight, heavy salt and pepper just so it gets a nice crust. I'll take my gloves off for this. I'm going to have to go downwind with that. It does. <laughs> right. I think we have another bowl down here, if I'm not mistaken. Bowl for what? Ah, some more salt. Oh. Ooh, a lot of salt, huh? There we go. Well, we're going to rub it down with a little bit of oil. Yeah. As well. And I'm going to get my gloves back on. And then it's going to be time to uh, truss and, and wrap it up. Nice. Wind caught that one. It is a really beautiful day out here, though. I was a little worried when I woke up this morning. Yeah, it was a little chillier this morning, wasn't it? Yep. When I got up around 4.15, a little chilly out in Ravenel. All right. So we are going to take the stuffing that's now started to soften up here. Okay. I'm going to put it right here in the middle. I'm going to stuff it full because by the time after you wrap it, you're going to lose some. It doesn't matter. It's not the end of the world. You put it on the bottom of the pans, everything will be okay. So we're going to wrap her up. It's going to look just like that. You want to put her on a tin first? Yeah, you got one? Yeah. So if you reach down there, I'll get you some aluminum foil. If you reach down there, you should see the tin. There, there. Yep, I see it. Maybe not grab the top one. It might be seasoned with, uh, with pollen right now. Might be seasoned up with pollen pretty good right now. So. Uh, this one, this one's not bad. This is the one I was underneath. There we go. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah I thought you were gonna put the full down. Hopping ahead of me here, folks. <laughs> All right, so here I have some twine that I went ahead and pre measured and cut. I'm going to wrap around. It's not edible, Mayor. <laughs> Mariner's like, what dropped down? It was foil. 
I'm going to tighten her up. This is going to help contain all the juices. It's going to keep it flavorful and moist on the inside so it doesn't dry out. And it looks really cool. Now, trusting, that's one of the things that my grandmother taught me how to do. Yeah? Way back in the day. Back when I first started to think about cooking. And it was with her Berladen recipe, which is one of my absolute favorite meals to eat ever. But she's back in my hometown of Tlaibor, Germany right now. Getting ready to celebrate her 85th birthday. 85? Yep, still kicking 85. 85 trips around the sun, huh? Yep, the last one left. All right, so we're going to take one more. The last one left? Is that what you just said? Yeah, my last, well, my last grandparent left. Anyway. Oh, I thought you were talking about her last trip. I was like, <laughs> sorry, Grandma Roush. Oh, you're done. <laughs> oh, no. oh, my goodness. You, you ain't got no more of those. <laughs> Chris is calling it. <laughs> Last trip around the sun. This is it. <laughs> nah, she's a trooper. She, uh, the, the problem is me and her can't be in the kitchen at the same time, though. Yeah. No, because she's got to do things exactly her way, and she still uses the paring knife for everything. So no matter what she's dicing or cutting, and it's kind of tough to be in a in the kitchen when you have you need you need only need one fox in the hen house and so right now i'm just going to wrap around every bone okay and kind of just like this and this is going to help keep our bones looking nice and keep them up and now you'll see when we take the next one out how this really helped keep its shape and its form well, I did not do it that way. <laughs> well, still looks great, Derek. Okay, thank you, you. Give yourself some credit. I uh, we're gonna have to cut a fair amount of string out. I did it like you tighten a tire, where I took a line from this one across. <laughs> okay. Well, that we had a we had a an XO in the uh, when I was in the army. We had an XO, Sean Agnew. Um, he would always, one of his favorite things to say is that is a way. <laughs> and I was known for doing things a way rather than the way. Another thing he said all the time was words mean things. And, uh, they certainly do. Right. Now I'm just going to add some more of the stuffing around the bottom of the pan. Add a little bit more on top. Just give that extra... Yeah, let Mayor get a little bit because yeah, he's grabbing some stuff now off the ground, huh? Yeah, he's getting right off my sock. He's getting the flavor of of brunch this morning and stuffing. He's getting a two for one. What was brunch this morning? Well, it was just our 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 breakfast menu at the Francis Marion at the Swamp Fox. Nice. All right, here we have our finished product of the crown of pork, which will now go in the smoker. And it was about eight hours, right? Or no, no, five hours, five hours, <laughs> eight hours. I was thinking the pork butt this I did this morning. All right, so we're going in the smoker with it, huh? Yep. Let me get on the other side of you because the sun is terrible. All right. Place it around. She's going in there. Tighten her down. And let's uh let's go ahead. Let's get ready. Get a the... few more chips in there. Some smoke rolling on her. But we had another one of these sitting here relaxing, right? Yes, sir. We're about to pull that one out right now. Resting. Resting is the proper term for it. You are correct. 
And pretty I, much when you rest, you're just letting the juices flow through so that you, they don't all release whenever you cut it. I'm out of cord. <laughs> I'm out of cord. Or it's a... Let me switch over to Chris out there for a second. Just doing a little cleaning up real quick. Give me the paper towel that's right up there, please. So clean up the workstation just, just here for a second. And uh, we will bring this one out. All right. So here we have our finished product. Good caramelization on the outside. Now this one, the other night, Chris pulled a fast one on me. Yeah, what how to pull a fast one on you? He uh, he made two ribs go away on this one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, oh yeah, somebody I, needs to have dinner that night, man. I turned around <laughs> and I was like, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, Chris, you got me. And uh, he put it in the Ziploc bag and took it home to him and his roommate. So uh, he had a nice little French pork chop. Yeah, yeah. my roommate might not have saw that. Oh, no, it, it didn't even make it to your roommate, huh? Nah, uh, he'd already eaten when I got home. All right, so now I'm just going to cut off this truss that you had <laughs> made over here. My spoke? Yeah. Not bad, though. I think we'll be able to get it. All right. Standing rib roast. Is this the same as a... Standing rib roast. That I think I'm gonna to defer to you. Yeah, um, kinda. Kinda. I mean, normally I would, I would think of a rib roast that without a bone in, and you would just truss it up and then cut it up. Okay. I mean, this is more of a. I mean, normally, just your just your chops. It's your it's your crown. You get to have fun with this one whenever you cut it off for the, for your guests, and when you do. We're just gonna follow. I'm gonna follow the bone. Got my shadow on there. All right. It's just me and my shadow. I rip that off. I slice into here. You see, we have a nice. A smoke ring on the outside, which is good. And our stuffing is all the way in there. So I'd, I'd say we completed this one. You got some plates under there. You want to plate one up? Sure. Now, typically, I do a nice plate presentation, but I'm not sure we have everything we need for Chris to do one. So we're just going to go ahead and do a taste test here. Oh, we're going to we'll make a nice little plate here. Oh, you got everything you need? Always have everything I need, sir. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta work. We gotta work with what you got. Leipzig, Germany. Is that how you pronounce Leipzig. it? Leipzig. Leipzig. Leipzig, Germany. That is further away from where I'm from. I'm more from the Mainz, uh, Frankfurt, Mainz area. Gotcha. Well, Russell here said his grandmother was from Leipzig. Do you want some? I got honey and stuff in the. Uh, you uh, need to... We're just going to, I threw that down on the bottom, just kind of give it a little shimmer and to help my, uh... oh, sorry, stepping on the cord, folks, to help it stay down in the wind. Yep. So. Oh, shoot, I'm knocking so, things over now. A little fresh cracked pepper. That looks yummy. And here we have it. Actually, I'll finish it up with just a 
a little bit of orange on there. A little squeeze of it too, huh? Squeeze it on there. There we go. We have our king of crown. Pork All right. Well, let's. Uh, since that one looks so good, I'm gonna snag a picture of it first. Let's um maybe clean up some of this. We can get it over here. What you really want to say is you just want me to cut the rest of these off the bones so that way we can get ready to eat. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> that sounds like a good idea for sure. You um you mind getting out of your way? Well what what you're doing is you're casting the shadow. That looks really good. And I will share these with y'all afterwards, but let me get that camera back in here for you. And um show y'all what we're working with here. Let me get this back over here and show you exactly what we're working with. This thing looks delicious. Well, I'm sure it's going to taste as good as it looks. Mariner's here. There you go. Here's another little presentation that you have on the board. Oh, but geez, would you look at this? With the stuffing on it. Would you look at that? He's getting really creative over here. Well, Food styling is actually my, uh, would be my dream job. Food styling, huh? But it's difficult to get in there because everybody already has their backups and it's, it's just a tough industry to get into. You got to know somebody who knows somebody in order to do it. So um, I'm here for now and I'm glad you brought me on. I had a good time. I, I'm glad you came out. Let me, uh, let me switch back over to number one. And uh, is there a knife and a fork under there? I believe so. Let's, uh. Let's go ahead and get knifed and forked up. Oh. Let's get knifed and forked up. There you go. You really don't need a knife. I already cut the pork off the bone. I ain't staying out of the way again. No, it's good. All right. well, let's do this one, huh? All right, that works for me. This one's got the stuffing. Try that stuffing real quick. I'm more of a pork guy, so I'm gonna go for the pork first. Mm. Smoke flavor? It's got good smoke flavor on it, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I crushed it. Huh? It's awesome. Yeah, man. That is delicious. That. That smoke really helps out. Really yeah. helps out. That smoke. I know at first I was a little hesitant to do it on the smoker. Yeah, but as you can see, we got a, we got a good ring on it, and it stayed nice and moist on the inside. And even after we held it, held it in the smoker on the way out here, you know, it still didn't dry out. And yeah, that Derek called me freaking out. It was that, it was that one one thirty five. You know, what do I do? Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh my god, we're gonna overcook this thing. Uh, thanks to our good friend, the d -Hack now, the uh, new law is 145 it has to come to. Uh, so, no more undercooked pork. But, let me grab a little sliver of this bark here. Am I cutting in a bone? I am, ain't I? Probably. I'm cutting in a string. Just go ahead and manhandle one of those one of those chops over no, there. No, I'm, I'm giving it <clears throat> to Mariner. <laughs> to get the, get the official approval. He's a patient. Patient old good boy over here, hmm. waiting on the uh, the pork chops all day. He he's been with me at the dock all day, waiting on this this very moment. So, um, let me plug back in so y'all can follow me to the helm. I'll check in with y'all at the helm real quick. Are we following? Uh oh, we're going back through. Oh, now it's following. <laughs> 
Now it's following. So we're going to come back over here to the helm real quick. I'll check in with y'all and uh, see what we got going on. So we've got Russell's talking about her son being his dad, fought through her hometown in World War II. Was he? That's that's really cool. That's really cool. I agree with Tim there that that's uh that's that's very cool. Um, I I think yeah it turned out great. Thanks, Brandon. I, it looks delicious. It tastes just as good as it looks. Russell, I'm sorry. We're going to have to get you a uh, branded uh, crying towel because I'm sure this <laughs> has you crying that you can't be here to taste it. And we, we wish you could be here. Um, <clears throat> just around the corner from here is the <clears throat> Laffy Destroyer. It's a DDR, I believe. Um my grandfather served on those in World War II, talking about that. One of my great memories uh, was when I was here at the Citadel, he was giving us a tour rather than taking the, rather than taking the Patriots Point uh, guided tour. Grandpa had served on one of those during World War II, so he was able to give us the, the behind-the-scenes stories, tales, and explanations on it all. So I, I think it's, it's really cool to trace back to some of that lineage there. Anyways, um, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, there's really not much of a ride back and I've got a bunch of stuff to sort out here. So what we're probably gonna do is just end it here. I will see y'all Friday. Thanks again. Y'all have a great weekend. See you soon. And let's, uh, let's thank Chris again thank and we'll guys. see him again in April. Yes sir, we'll see y'all then.